thank you so much for coming to my talk today, KringleCon. When Santa reached out to me and asked me to be a presenter here at KringleCon, uh, I was so excited to do it. Um, some of the, the issues that we've had at the North Pole over the last few years is, have been a little bit problematic around Christmas time. So it's a, it's a real honor to be here helping out and, and helping to train the crowd and how we can try to protect the North Pole and Santa moving forward. I'm from New Hampshire and it's usually pretty cold there. I thought that would prepare me pretty well, but boy, it is cold up here in the North Pole. But uh, on the on the positive side, the hot chocolate is just so much better here than it is in other parts of the world. Uh, so today what we're gonna talk about is Burp Suite and, and how we can use Burp Suite to perform web app penetration testing. And uh, we'll, we'll try to use that in, in the ongoing fight to protect the North Pole. So let's get started. So a basic overview of what Burp Suite is, it is a web app penetration testing framework. And the way that we use it is we're able to proxy requests from the browser to the server and perform some manipulation, either to learn more about a web application or to try to make the web app do things that it's not intended to do, right? Uh, we're able to do that for both HTTP and HTTPS traffic, and we can do that in, in manual ways, just us kind of poking around with, at an application and seeing what it does, or we can queue up lots of different requests at once and see how a web app might respond to more automated techniques. So when developers say things like, why would anyone use it that way? Why, why do we have to protect for this kind of thing? How would that ever happen? Our job is to then say, well, because burp, and we'll see a little bit of that here coming up. So how do you get burp? It is included in default installations of Kali, which uh, a lot of you may be familiar with. You can also get native versions on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Uh, it's also written in Java, so you can get a, a, a jar file to run burp, and you can do that at Port Swigger's website. There are three main versions. The community version is free. Uh, it is more than enough for uh, the basic average use, especially if you're just getting started with Burp Suite. But the pro version is $3.99 a year. It is a really great tool and it's well worth the cost if uh, you burp often or you're trying to do more automated attacks where you don't want to have some of the rate limiting that we'll see here coming up in a few slides. There is also an enterprise version uh, that runs you about four grand a year. So the essential core of what Burp is, is a proxy. You have your browser, you make requests through it, Burp catches those, you can manipulate them, and then you send them off to the server again. And you can see things coming uh, out from your browser and then coming back on the server as well. You do need to configure the proxy. By default, it runs on local host with port 8080, but you can configure that any way that you want to. So if you wanted to have requests coming from a remote machine, you could bind to an interface that isn't local host. Um, also, if you wanted to listen on a port that's not 8080, you could do that as well you do have to configure your browser to match. So uh, here we see a, a proxy configuration screen for Firefox, um, and most of the, the major browsers have similar options. You just need to make sure that you set that to whatever you set in the Burp proxy listener. Uh, and a, a tip from Santa here that he wanted to make sure that I included, you do have to make sure that you install Burp's certificate in order to avoid some of the HTTPS warnings that you might see in browsers from time to time, as well as to proxy HSTS sites. It won't work otherwise. So let's dig into some of the bag of goodies that make Burp so useful to us. Uh, one of the major features that, that you'll notice right away just firing Burp up is that it does have a feature called Intercept. Now, another tip that Santa wanted me to include is that Intercept is enabled by default. For people who are new to using Burp and are just getting started, this can be a little bit tricky because what Intercept does is it catches and holds your request so that you can modify it in flight. Uh, this can be things like cookie values, post parameters. You could even swap the entire request method from a get to post, for example. But this can seem broken if you don't know this ahead of time. Essentially, what ends up happening is you make a request in your browser, intercept catches it in Burp's proxy, and you just see uh, the little wheel in your browser spinning, waiting for Burp to release the request. So if you don't know that it's there, it might seem like it's broken. And I have, I've actually seen more than a few people get caught up at this step. Just know it's working as it should. It's holding it so that you can uh, modify the request. If you just want the history and you don't want to modify it, you can turn intercept off and it will work seamlessly, giving you a history of the requests and responses in Burp. Another item in the bag of goodies here that we, that we have is the Burp Spider. What this does is it crawls a site and it allows you to identify additional resources that might be hosted by that site. 
It will do things like follow links. If there are any forms such as logins or, or other types of forms, it will submit them. And will also take some well-known resources uh, such as WP admin, for example, and it will determine whether or not those are available at the site. Now, in terms of professional penetration testing, which is what we all are, a burp does have a concept of scope, right? So if, if there are links included in a site that are not within our scope, we can configure burp to only follow the things that are within our scope, which is a really useful feature to have. The repeater is a, a really super useful uh, uh, tool within Burp. And what this does is it allows you to take any request, whether you get it from HTTP proxy history or you get it from um, um, uh, capturing the traffic and holding it, uh, we can send that to repeater. And what this allows us to do is manually manipulate that request and see the response immediately side by side. So we're not proxying requests from the browser. The request is originating within Burp and we're getting the response right there in line as well. This is really useful for quick, targeted, repeated tests within Burp. If we're trying to do something like uh, get a string just perfectly correct for SQL injection or try to determine what values might be allowed through a filter, Repeater is a really great way of doing this. And in general, if you see a request that you want to add to Repeater, you can find a little action button, click action and say send to Repeater, or you can typically right click and send to Repeater and that will work as well. Intruder is a really, really cool feature. And what this does is it basically automates some of the functionality of Repeater. So instead of sending one-off requests that, that we immediately view the, the response to and then manipulate accordingly, we can queue up some number of, of requests and have this automated. So if we have a word list that we want to try or we have different different strings that we want to test SQL injection with or modify cookie values or, or see if we can predict session IDs, for example, you can configure positions within the request and populate them with pre-specified payloads. These can be things like uh, numbers within a range or even loaded in from files that have a, a list of items you'd like to include. Now, what's uh, really interesting is you do have the ability to manipulate each of these payloads and do some additional processing on them. For example, let's say that we're testing a web application and we want to determine a list of likely active users. So we, we have some email addresses in a file and we know that the at symbol, for example, needs to be URL encoded before we submit the request. Burp's able to do that for you with uh, some auto processing of the payload. And you can do other things like match and replace as well. There are a few different modes for Burp Intruder. Um, the, the most common one and, and one that we talked about already is Sniper. And what this does is it takes a payload in a single position. So we have just one spot that we want to swap out for different items in our list of payloads. Battering RAM is similar, but it will take that individual payload and in insert it at multiple positions. So imagine we have a username that is in a post parameter and it's also in a, an included in the URL, for example. We might want that same payload in multiple spots. Pitchfork will also have multiple positions, but it will have different payloads in each position. So where battering RAM is the same payload in multiple positions, Pitchfork is different payloads in multiple positions. And then you have cluster bomb, which is kind of a combination of all of them. All possible payload positions with all possible payloads uh, are requested one after another. So it's probably the closest to brute forcing of any of the options, but it does generate a large number of requests. Um, a, another thing that I, I see um, newcomers to Burp typically get caught up with is, is the modes and trying to understand the differences between the modes. The main thing to remember is in general, if you're looking to modify one thing, you're going to be looking at Sniper and you'll use that for a little bit and then you realize that the Sniper feature doesn't really meet your needs for, for a, a, a new type of attack that pops up and then you'll start to escalate through some of the other modes uh, and get a better feel for them. But hopefully this gets you started. Sequencer is very interesting and, and what this does is it is it takes something like a session ID for example and it will take the request that the server responds to to set your session ID and it will repeat that as many times as it needs to in order to, to determine the number of bits of entropy in that session ID. And the reason why we're interested in that is because maybe there's some predictable pattern or their pseudo random number generator implementation is flawed in some way and we can determine what likely usable session IDs are. 
uh, and with some other uh, approaches and flaws built in, we might be able to predict those session IDs and use them to access portions of the system that we shouldn't be able to access without logging in. We could do a lot of this manually, right? Um, but the, the math is difficult and it's not something that we can do very quickly and Burp can do it in an automated way. And then at the end, spit out some nice graphs that show you uh, for different significance levels and confidence levels, the, the level of entropy in something like a session ID, which is a really, really useful feature to have built right into the proxy. So there's a lot more to Burp Suite, right? There's there's things like the extender, uh, which allow you to build your own custom um, custom options to load into Burp in, in Java and in other languages. Uh, Scanner is is a pro feature that as you're going through and making some of your requests, Burp will automatically do some analysis on looking for things like clear text password. SQL injection, uh, cross-site scripting, and other vulnerabilities. It happens automatically in the background, and you can trigger it to happen um, on demand. Decoder is a way of taking different payloads, something that might look like it's base64, and trying to determine if you can decode it. Um, comparer will take different requests and basically do a diff on them and tell you what's different in between them, which is a really useful thing. If you're making small changes and the response generates a, a large amount of traffic, Comparer can, can do that for you very easily. Macros are a way of, of automating and stringing together several tasks that you would perform manually, which is really cool. Uh, you, you can schedule some of this as well. And then you also have Collaborator that you can, you can have a separate server that you report back to to get uh, more up-to-date information on some vulnerabilities that might exist. Um, in, in a site that you're looking at. While I'd love to have the time to dig into all these things right now, we don't have enough time here to cover it, um, but hopefully, and I think we've covered some of the basics to at least get you started. So so what, what happens next? We have a, a decent basic level understanding of how to jump in and start using Using Burp, what do we want to look at now? Uh, so the first thing that you can do is you can find me on Twitter um, at Shamodex, and you can ask me any questions you might have if you have comments about the presentation, or you you want somebody to just take you through a more individual deep dive. I'd be more than willing to do that. Uh, Port Swigger has some great resources available. Sand also has two courses, SEC 542 and SEC 642, which um, SEC 542 gives you a great introductory level the burp and sec 642 digs into some of the higher level features you can also test your skills with holiday hack challenge uh, dvwa net wars hack the box and some other things that you find out there um, also just teach someone what you know if you learn something here today or you or you dig in on your own and you find some stuff that's interesting communicate that back to other people one of the best ways to learn is to teach uh, and not only is that good for you but you're spreading the burp and, and web app pen testing world love, which is, uh, which is kind of what this season is all about, right? Giving. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed this presentation today. Uh, have a great time at the rest of KringleCon and Holiday Hack Challenge. I do have some people that I want to thank, uh, not the least of which among them are, are Santa Claus himself. Um, the Star Wars Holiday Special deserves uh, always deserves a concerted call out. Jason Blanchard, Ed Scotus, uh, and the Sands Institute as well. Um, and, and, and that's all I have for you. Thank Thank you very much for attending and, and enjoy the rest of the con.